ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. Dune is an American epic science fiction film by Quebec director Denny Villeneuve. Warning, this video contains mild spoilers. The movie is based upon the 1965 novel of the same name written by American author Frank Herbert. Dune is set to have its American theatrical release on October 22nd. This is the second in a video series on the Dune costumes co-designed by Bob Morgan and Jacqueline West. This video will focus on the armor worn by House Atreides. In my last video, I mentioned that the costume designers hadn't done any interviews yet, but in the latest issue of Total Film, they mentioned some of their inspiration for the costumes, and I will get to that in future videos. But I thought I should mention that they labeled the hybrid style of Dune Mod Evil, and that the Atreides battle armor was modeled on medieval suits of armor. In the still images released by the studio, we have some good looks at the great armor worn by both Leto Atreides, Duke of House Atreides, portrayed by Oscar Isaac, and Gurney Halleck, war master in service of Duke Leto, portrayed by Josh Brolin. The armor is minimalist, no nonsense, a little bit like origami with its folded edges. There are no embellishments and no engravings, although there appears to be a military metal ribbon detail, but it's tone-on-tone -tone gray, so you might not see it unless you look closely. This minimalism is similar to the Atreides military uniforms pictured at the Dune LA exhibit with pictures by Maggie and LA that are very simplistic with just a subtle red hawk sigil on the collar of the uniform. Now, when I first saw the armor, my immediate thought was that I'd seen something like this before, the squared off type armor, possibly in a video game, even though I'm not familiar with them. The armor looks similar to Master Chief's armor in Halo and also Tony Stark's Iron Man. And the chunkiness of the armor also looks like War Machine in Endgame and the remake of Robocop. Costume concept artist Keith Christensen has worked on several Marvel and DC superhero movies, including Thor and Thor the Dark World, Black Panther, and Batman. And also members of the wardrobe team, such as Simon Brindle, whose work you'll likely know as the armor maker for the first two seasons of Game of Thrones, has worked with Marvel Studios and shows featuring video game armor. Brindle worked on Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, The Dark World, and Halo Nightfall. The armor also appears to be reflective of brutalist architecture featuring cold, exposed gray concrete structures with hard angles. Brutalism's name comes from the French term béton brut and translates literally to raw concrete. The connection to brutalist architecture in the armor likely isn't a coincidence because director Denis Villeneuve was influenced by this brand of architecture in his near-future flick Blade Runner 2049, in particular referencing the 1950s brutalist architecture in London. This certainly makes sense to me because the entire costume design appears to have this sensibility about it. In David Lynch's Dune 1984, the Atreides soldiers didn't wear armor, but instead desert battle dress uniforms and legionnaire-style hats. Now, they didn't need to wear armor because they had the shield up in Arakeen to protect them, but once the shield was down, they were easily picked off. So while Lynch went in one direction, there is one mention of armor in Frank Herbert's Dune novel. Duke Leto Atreides tells Gurney Halleck, I want to arrange a new planetary dispersal with armored squads going out first. But even with that sentence, I'm not wholly certain that they are referring to the personnel's armor or the ships themselves. Now, in terms of the armor being influenced by medieval suits of armor, most modern armor that's seen in action movies, including tactical armor, is rooted in some way in medieval armor. The carbon fiber type armor of the Atreides armor is segmented and riveted together like we see in plate armor to allow for movement. 
Here's an example of an Italian composite armor in absolutely amazing condition considering it's over 500 years old from the Royal Armories in Leeds that was featured in the Hundred Years War. As well, here's another example of portions of field armor from 1524 from the Met in New York. Under the armor, the knight would wear a shirt of mail, or in some cases a gambeson or buff coat, as well to offer additional protection. The Atreides are wearing a jumpsuit as their armor base, with some built-in protections such as hard elbow pads and knee pads incorporated into the suit. It also appears that instead of wearing shield belts on their waists, the device is now worn on their wrist like a large watch. One thing that I'll point out is that while plate medieval armor was often the silvery steel gray color, most knights wore a surcoat over top of their armor, featuring their coat of arms, basically advertising their house or allegiance, and with the additional benefit of preventing the knights from cooking in their suits when in the hot sun. Now, I'm not sure what's going on with these two openings of the front, but I read online and I thought it was pretty hilarious that the breastplate opening also functions as an ice cube dispenser. Wouldn't that be a thing to have on Arrakis? Until we see the movie, I'm not sure how the suits are cooled. Hopefully this will be explained in the movie. According to her website and Instagram account, London-based artist and designer Rachel Freer was the costume cutter of the Under Armour for the Atreides uniforms. She also worked on elements of the still suit, which I will expand on in a future video. I only have this side view of the helmet. I think that the visor is see-through and likely retractable. The profile silhouette of the helmets looks like a hooded falcon. Perhaps it's meant to look like a hawk. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of the Atreides armor. I have more videos coming on the costumes of Dune, providing all of the details I learned along with my analysis. And if you enjoy this content, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.